When, when I moved to London for college at age 18, I was a virgin, <clears throat> but I knew just who would relieve me of my virginity. <laughs> We'd be English, of course, with pasty skin, high cheekbones, an aquiline nose, and slender fingers designed for smoking Galois cigarettes in dark cafes. He'd be cool and remote, maybe a little cruel. He'd break my heart and run off to become a rock star. Years later, he'd write a song about me, and it wouldn't be particularly flattering. <laughs> of course, none of this happened. Instead, within two weeks of landing in London, I was promptly deflowered by a very affable Italian named Tommaso. He had olive skin, a Roman nose, stubby fingers designed to cook delicious pasta for us, and he was filled with so much love and joy that I'm convinced that's why his skin always felt so warm. His love was overflowing. He'd pick me up at the train station with an armful of roses. He asked me to marry him within two months of dating him. He always held my hand when we went anywhere, even walking through the piss-scented alley to get to the grocery store. There were never any lazy morning fox, only passionate lovemaking. And it all annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> what he saw as loving, I saw as smothering. It's not entirely my fault. My people are Nordic. Finnish, to be exact. The way to say I love you in Finnish is Mina Rakastan Sinoa. Aside from the fact that sounds like something a drill sergeant would yell at you at boot camp, we don't say it much. You might hear it once in your life from your mother on her deathbed. <laughs> and the response isn't necessarily, I love you too, it's more likely to be, I know. <laughs> this isn't because we are cold or unemotional, it's just that to us, the truest, deepest love is the love that is unspoken. It is simply understood. A secret bond between two people, I know you love me, I know. This difference between us became a big problem. Tommaso needed more visible, audible emotion from me. It drove him crazy. When I'd go visit my parents on school breaks, he'd say, why aren't you crying? Aren't you sad that we're gonna be apart? When we argued, he'd wail, what do you want from me, my blood? And I'd say, actually, I just wanna get to my art history class on time. <laughs> he'd routinely grab a kitchen knife and threaten to kill himself until I finally said, you know what? Good luck with that. That thing so dull it can't cut a tomato. The more I demanded, the more he retreated. Pardon me, the more he demanded, the more I retreated. It was so stifling. I felt trapped by his grandiose love. So I started sneaking off on my own. I'd go feed the ducks in Hyde Park. I'd buy some socks at Marks and Spencer. I'd hide in dank pubs and read trashy paperbacks. All by myself. It was delicious. I was cheating on him with me. <laughs> then one evening, a theater ticket stub fell out of my coat pocket. I'd gone to see an Oscar Wilde play alone. He was not convinced. He picked it up and shoved it in my face, shouting, I knew it. I know you were cheating on me. We went back and forth and back and forth, me owning up to my illicit affair with myself until he said, I don't believe you. But if you can convince me that you haven't been cheating, I'll lick the soles of all your shoes. <laughs> Alright, now this was a new one. Okay, it was so absurd. My shoes? So again, we went back and forth some more until finally, unbelievably, he ripped open the closet door and began pulling out all of my shoes. Boots, sandals, flats. He ripped them all heel to toe as I watched. Filthy shoes. Shoes that I'd walked all over London, sometimes holding his hand. He looked so pathetic on the floor of our dingy basement flat, surrounded by my cheap footwear, tears streaming down his face. What could I do? How could I make him understand? How could I tell him I know? Truth was, I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. He would never be happy with my unspoken love, and I'd never be happy with his over-the-top, loud love. Love that always seemed to be playing to the cheap seats in the back of the theater. It was impossible to adjust the volume of love. Maybe if I were older, I could have tried harder. I might have been more understanding. Because since then, I've realized that love is work, just like anything else. We all make adjustments. But back then, I did the only thing I could think of. I reached under the bed and pulled out a pair of sneakers and said, you missed a pair. <laughs>